Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, just before we sing this song, I just wanted to share where it came from. It's called Come Into the Light, fitting for Anne's show. And um, actually, Anne asked us if we would be able to um, sing something original on her show. So Susanna and I came together and we said, well, let's just improvise and see what happens. And this song came out of it. So it's the first song that we've, yeah, that's come through us together. So feels beautiful to share it. We shared it last week, but to share it with you again this week. everyone um, thank you so much for the song that was beautiful and um, yeah very warm welcome to my guest today Thomas uh, Sylvia and you are Brit and I'm going to get straight to asking you questions because yeah hopefully we'll get through them all we'll see yeah for our viewers can you tell them how the project you know that you found expiring, uh, expiring, inspiring even. <laughs> Maybe it's expiring, who knows. It's beneficial for your awakening. <laughs> and uh, I don't know who wants to speak about that first. Uh, I have a felt joy in the project. And I have a chat in my daily life. But more and more, I have de development the possibility to follow the Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit's guidance. And that's the most important part of the, how the project has inspired me. And I think the whole project has definitely spread out my awakening. And for me, I can say, 
Okay, carry on you, Brett. <laughs> yes. I just want to say that it was such a help that you came in with that question from Spain when you and Sylvia were together. I hear myself in an echo, but I don't know. Um, so it was so beautiful to have the opportunity to come in and proofread together with Thomas and Sylvia. Thank you. Sylvia, I met you at your devotional stay in Spain. And that's where we practice no people pleasing, no private thoughts. And we did expression sessions. Uh, were you able to bring any of those things home and practice with Thomas? Yes, <laughs> I really did that. Um, when I started to um, uh, do the translations, I started with quantum forgiveness. And at that time, uh, I hadn't learned the no people pleasing and no private thoughts. Uh, so, it was a bit of a struggle for us <laughs> to work together, but then I went to Spain and I learned it and I came home and I learned Thomas <laughs> how to do it and we, it's such a difference, such a huge difference, uh, how we collaborate after that. We feel uh, more respect for each other and we have a calmer life together, laughing at our different perceptions. perceptions. Uh, and we feel we, we are working for the whole. So, yes, a huge difference with using those tools. Thank you. Thank you. Um... When you're actually working on the translation project, um, yeah, how does it work? Does it help to settle your mind? What are the benefits, really, you know, that you can call to mind? Uh, for me, it, is, it's, it has been a, a very big help for, um, especially, I notice it when I translated, I married the mystic. Um, because when I translate, uh, just in the moment I translate the words, it has been answers for the struggles I'm in right at that moment. So it was so good timing for, from the spirit uh, all the time. It was a blessing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that you, you, when I spoke to you about the difference between uh, translating quantum forgiveness and I married a mystic. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, quantum forgiveness gave me a much deeper understanding for, for the a course, for a course in Miracles. Uh, and I also realized that the movies were very helpful uh, in bringing up the very deep, very buried feelings I had and release them from my mind. Um, <clears throat> I married a mystic. I uh, has give, given me um, a tools to how I can bring the course, uh, uh, A Course in Miracles, into my daily life. Um, there's so many tools in that book that how, to, how I can settle my mind, uh, daily routines, uh, how to start my day, uh, how can I have a better contact with the Holy Spirit and uh, developing the trust for what I feel and hear. 
Beautiful, Sylvia. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. I was just wondering if you had anything to add, Thomas, or you were Brett. It's okay if not, I can move on to another question. <laughs> I just can agree with you. Forgiveness gave me to a, a better understanding of the Course in Miracle. But uh, I made a mystical more useful, had been more useful for me in the daily life. So I have the same experience in Sylvia. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, um, this is a question really for Sylvia. When I spoke to you about the interview, um, you said that the experience of translating and proofreading with Thomas has brought you from a very special type of relation into a more holy, or the beginnings of a more holy relationship. And that just felt really beautiful when you were telling me about it. And um, yeah. I wonder if you can expand on that. Tell me a little bit about the changes that have occurred in your relationship. Mm. Yes. <laughs> um, at first, I think we, we just stopped to project things, feelings on each other. Uh, and um, we have developed a much deeper respect for the other person. We are more tuning in and listening to what the other what, what the other people are saying. Uh, we don't judge each, each other for saying or thinking or having other opinions. And when something goes wrong, as you call it, uh, we often laugh. Mm. <clears throat> and that wasn't the case before. <laughs> so, and, and yeah, and not so much feeling of, of pride. Uh, oh, I can't say I was wrong. Uh, it, it, it's just my pride. I want to keep my pride. Now uh, we, we can both say, oh, that was wrong. I had wrong. And it feels so good. Mm. Yeah, I can feel it. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, this is a question that I'm going to direct towards you, Britt. Um, there were a few unexpected challenges that were coming through Living Miracles with the projects. And the first one was that the guidance came through that we'd no longer be publishing the books, the translations but placing them for free on the European website. And yeah, you were Brett, I just want to ask you, what were your thoughts around this? Well, uh, I felt joy when I heard it. Like, um, because when I met David, you know, freely you have received, now freely give. It was one of the first things that he wanted to just give uh, and uh, to extend in a way that's, everyone is invited and had the opportunity and um, so and I have translated one book before that became a book I transcribed it with a mighty companion and then I, I, think, I think we wanted to have our names so we had our names but this time I had no feeling of that because I was like the third leg on the tripod uh, so I had no expectations and um, but I could see you now when it came up that it was very interesting to see uh, that with no expectations so it's a, a lesson and a gift every time when the question is, comes out to see what is my feeling around it so it was very beautiful that we had we was uh, asked to, and we shared about this Thank you, you were Brett. And this is directed to Sylvia because I know that you had some stuff to work through around this, Sylvia. Uh, and it was around the desire to actually have your names in um, the translation, in the translated book. And um, 
yeah, can you talk a little bit about your feelings that came up around that and how you decided in the end that you didn't actually need or want that recognition? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I always felt that doing the job, translating, and uh, it, it takes a lot of time, but it was just a joy to give my time to the project. Uh, but when it came to the names, I had slightly different feelings. It really hurt my pride. <laughs> Here we go again with the pride. Um, so I, I just had to look very deep into that. What, from where did it come? Why did I feel like that? And um, I realized it was the ego in me that wanted to show off. And I could then see that it was a perfect gift from the spirit to me to look at uh, this. So therefore, no names. Okay, yeah. thank you. And I'd just like to add to that, that you could have actually put your names into the book. Nobody was saying you couldn't, but you actually came to that yourselves. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm directing this question at uh, Thomas, I know that, um, yeah, there were a few obstacles that came up for you when you started to work on the, um, on the project, you know, you were doing the, the first part of the proofreading and there were some things that you felt you needed to correct in the translation. There was a little bit of fear around speaking with Sylvia. Oh yes, it was a lot of feeling that turned up. <laughs> The first one was fear, and fear of don't be good enough to, to proofread. Don't understand the message and don't get the, the Swedish grammar in a correct way. So that's the first one I had to look to. Next one was actually guilt. I looked for faulties. When everything was good, I didn't say anything, but when I found something was wrong, I I have to tell her. So, in a way, I feel guilt for just looking for problems. And the third thing was attack feelings. When I was to tell Sylvia, she has, in my opinion, translated wrong. It's easy to say, I'm better than you. I found the wrong things you have done. So, I have to look at my the, the ego way you wanted to attack her. Uh, and then, and I have coped with that one, fear came back. There I tell Sylvia, <laughs> is she going to be mad at me? <laughs> so I have to, to look at fear again. And then I found out the best thing to approach it is to say what I think. And don't say what I think, it's people pleasing. If I say to Sylvia, that's good, and I don't mean it, it's really people pleasing, and that's... I have to learn not to do. So this also a lesson for me. So very much that came up in the beginning. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that, Thomas. And it sounds like you're having a great washing of all those people pleasing things and <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um you also mentioned that you like there was a difference between reading a book and proofreading a book. And yeah, I wondered if you wanted to just tell us a little bit about that. Yes, for me, when I, when I read a book, I just read it through. And if I get the message, I do. If I don't, I don't understand I didn't. But when I proofread, I read it several times. I want to get the message correct. So I, I step into the context, in a way, be a part of a book. And then I started to compare the way the book looks at the word to my own. And then I started to change my way of looking at the word. So it's, it's transferred my way of looking at the word, the, the perception of everything that happened. So it's very good. It's very good, very helpful for me to, to 
be in the project. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you also talked a little bit to me about, um, yeah, you know, like the the transfer of training. Really, you know, like it was like you were focusing in on a particular project, but how that affected your life in a wider way as well. Ooh, I have, I have been taking the experience from being the project into the real world, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> um, I found when I in the project, I'm, it's very fun to, to do it, and it has given me a lot of inner peace. And I also found that time just disappeared. And that, for example, I take it to my daily life. And for example, when I go to the grocery store and you, you have two queues and you choose the wrong one, before I was angry, how could I choose the wrong one? Now I just choose one, don't think why, stand there, look at the people around, and it, if it takes two minutes or five minutes, who cares? It's nice to just go up to the people and look at them and smile at them. That's beautiful. That's the miracle, isn't it? The complete change in perspective on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, Sylvia and Thomas, you've just moved very recently, a couple of weeks ago, um, to a new location. Um, you felt very prompted by spirit to move, even though it meant leaving your work, Thomas, your family, your friends. So how is that working out for you? Oh, it's uh, a step a bit back. It started with a, a prompt. A broker came to look at the house and wanted to sell it. And we said, of course, you can look at it. We're not going to move. And it take half an hour and half, an, half a year. And we get the prompt to look at apartments 500 kilometers away from our house. And we both looked at it and found the same apartment. And we said, OK. We're going to move there. So we bought it without seeing it. The Holy Spirit say you're going to move, so we are moving. <laughs> and we the no problems with moving. We love to live here. And the funny thing, the the, the the connection with the relatives have been better since we moved. Beautiful. Yeah, very guided. Thank you. Yeah, you were Brit. Um, yeah, uh, Thomas had to release a lot of people pleasing and no private thoughts. And yeah, you being the, the third leg on the tripod, um, I wonder how it felt for you because you're not only correcting Sylvia, it's, it's Thomas as well. So how's that been? The funny thing is, I didn't, I wasn't aware that Thomas was in it in this way, because it was been with Sylvia, you know. So we have been connecting, and I knew that Thomas had looked at it, but um, yeah, I haven't felt a fear against the, correcting the two of them. But of course, it is quite a new relationship with Sylvia, and coming and correcting and changing things that she has translated. So, but I felt it was so much joy from the beginning. With it, how it came in, it has felt like, yeah, a trust and a joy. And then we have found a way to listen together. So when I have made some changes, and then we are reading, I'm reading the book out loud when we connect, and we're listening, and, and I, I suggest the changes and. The, it has been very smooth in a way to work like that. But of course, I can see that it's a bit of a fear, but we can express it many times when we feel if it comes up a fear. I can express it and share it. And we are looking at things in that way together. So that's so beautiful to have an opportunity. It's like an expression session also being in this function together. So, very helpful for me. 
Thank you. Yeah, I was going to ask you how it's helping with the mind training, but you're kind of answering that already. I don't know if you've got anything to add. I think it's so beautiful. For me, it has been a very beautiful way to connect and to be in relationship and also have a joint purpose. Having something uh, to work with and uh, at the same time getting to know each other better and trust more to express. Uh, you were great, thank you. I had a few more questions for you, uh, but we're actually about two minutes away from the end um, of the interview, so I'm just going to jump quickly to the last question, which is, um, yeah, you were, you found out quite recently that you and Sylvia uh, are going to go on a new uh, adventure together, so I just want to invite both of you to just say a little bit something about that before we end. And as well, just to say thank you to all three of you for a wonderful interview and for your openness and honesty in all that you've shared. It's been very beautiful. Thank you. So, thank you. Carry on. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I signed up for the Tabula Rasa school. Uh, and um, I didn't know that Sylvia also signed up. So when we shared about it in our Zoom group, she said that she had done it. And that was a miracle. It, it feels so beautiful. It just came in very quick. <laughs> yes, it, it's lovely to have the opportunity to do this together with you, Eva Britt. Mm. I just love it. Looking forward to it with joy and love. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Again, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that brings us to the end of the interview. Thank you. Bye. Much love to everyone. <laughs>